All right, I'm the Flat Rate Master, and today we're talking about improving your shop's overall efficiency. All right, so I'm gonna tell a little story, you know, story time. The shop I'm in started a little over four and a half years ago. I was one of the first employees and am the only current employee that was here at opening. Now, my boss is an engineer, not a technician, and he also consults and does efficiency plans for manufacturing. That's, you know, he's an engineer, he engineers stuff. And he had some good ideas coming in, but, you know, practice in the real, real world, some of them didn't work out. Now, for a chunk of that time while I was here, I was just the lead technician. I was not the shop foreman. I was, you know, subject to the service riders, them assigning tickets, and, you know, the resulting chaos that ensued. And I'm not tooting my own horn, but the fact of the matter is, is when I took over as shop foreman and changed a lot of the processes that happened in the back, our overall shop efficiency went up. Now, before anybody goes, you know, oh, you're just, I did not invent any of the stuff I did. I just implemented it because I knew about it. This is just gonna be a video of some quick tips that you can implement in your shop to hopefully increase productivity and maximize what your techs make. One of the things I do here in the morning is diag time. That's checking out cars, getting parts ordered, getting, you know, the car sold, you know, depending on our, you know, car load, we might go, I'm, you know, me especially, I might go till noon before I start actually fixing cars. What that allows us to do is stack up the afternoon. You know, I've got technicians that are booked up for, you know, the rest of the day, maybe even in tomorrow, even sometimes even into the third day. It allows us to work very efficiently because we're not, you know, stopping and having to check out a car. We're checking out a car, checking out a car, checking out a car, checking out a car, and moving on once everything sells, we can figure out what's gotta go and maximize our productivity from that point. So what happens is after everything sells or you know things start selling, we figure out, you know, well, that 12 hour job is not getting done today because we can't get parts till tomorrow. And we start formulating a plan of, well, you, you know, Zach, you need to work, you know, go ahead and knock this car out because you can get it done quick, you've got parts. Then after that, start working on that big job, et cetera. It's not, rocket science it's it's maximizing your tech's time for repairs where they've got parts in hand you know one of the worst things i see for efficiency is a technician will pull in a car diagnose it and then waiting on approval screw that i don't want to see a guy standing around when i've got cars in the parking lot pull it out pull the next one in diagnose it keep going now, obviously, if they don't have cars, that's a different management issue, and that's not this video. That's, they need to work on advertising and getting car count up. But what I'm referring to is, when you've got technicians that are sitting on their butts, when there's cars sitting outside that need to be checked out, they need to be checked out. Another thing that I see way too often is haphazard ticket distribution. What I mean by that is a, it's kind of, you know, well, you're available, so here, take this check engine light. But I've only been working on cars for a year, is an example. You know, giving work to a, you know, potential work to a technician that's not really qualified and having them struggle, even though, you know, in 20 minutes, another guy's gonna be available that was much more qualified to take that car. On the other side of that, the loading up the master tech with intermittent diags instead of you know handing him a timing belt every now and then. Same pro problem. 
ticket distribution is one of the biggest problems in most shops is they're poorly distributed. Now what I do here, obviously at Shop Foreman, I distribute the work and how I distribute it is availability, who's available, you know, if Bam Bam has 30 hours sold, obviously he's not getting another ticket because he's got way too much to handle right now, so get on it. Skill level, like I will not be handing, you know, Christian a, you know, can network diagnosis when he's a nuts and bolts guy. You know, I can, you know, looking at a ticket, I can kind of judge who that needs to go to. And on the other side of it, I also look at hours. Now I got emailed the other day about a shop foreman that is on flat rate assigning work. And basically his shop foreman was screwing people. I don't do that. I mean, I, I like to think I don't do that. I look at, like for instance, today is Thursday. When it comes to assigning like a gravy ticket, let's say we've got a customer that, you know, is, you know, 100K service. It comes in, I'm looking at who's, you know, who's, who's, who's low on hours, who needs that ticket? Not, you know, woohoo, I get 100K. Yeah, sometimes I need that 100K and I will take it. But, I, you know, if my hours are good, I'm not taking it. I'm giving it to who needs it. And like, for instance, I had with Christian coming on board, I've had to correct some things and basically even out our hours because Christian was doing a bunch of quick, easy gravy stuff. And, you know, got to even things out a little bit and make sure everybody gets the equal amount of gravy tickets. When it comes to ticket distribution, skill and availability are the two biggest factors. I can't give, you know, you know, I'm not pulling, you know, bam bam off a 14 hour ticket to do an oil change. He's not available. And that's one of the things that also happens is so often a technician will get a nice gravy ticket and will get pulled off, pulled off, pulled off. And by the time he's done, that ticket was no longer gravy. I worked at a shop and happened all the time. You know, you'd have a nice gravy ticket and, oh, I need you to do this oil change. Oh, th this one, you know, this, 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 this. And then the next question out of their, their face was, well, why isn't that car done yet? Pet peeve of mine anyway, but, you know, if a technician's getting constantly pulled off a, a job, their efficiency will keep dropping. You know, they've got to get back in that mindset, got to figure out where they were, all that kind of stuff. Little things like that add up considerably. You know, oh, 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 you know, can you do this oil, wait or oil change for me real quick? No. You know, I'm not pulling a any technician in the shop. You know, I'm not pulling them off a, you know, good job, big job to do an oil change. Somebody else in the shop will be available. They can do it. Now on oil changes at this shop, we take a limited number of waiter oil changes and they're only in the morning. We do not do afternoon waiter oil changes. It kills way too much efficiency. Doesn't always make our customers happy, but it's how we have to do it. Parts, now this one is always a problem and nothing you do, nothing you do will ever make this problem go away. But you have to do as best you can to make sure you have the correct parts. That means looking up cars by VIN number. That means actually getting their build date. Actually looking at, when it's, when it's a GM vehicle, RPO codes. 
actually spending more than two minutes looking at parts. And unfortunately, a lot of efficiency is lost to incorrect parts. To give a simple example, there was a Saab here, Saab, Saab story. Inner tie rods were wrong that we had to special order. Rotors were wrong. Brake pads were wrong. And then we got the right inner tie rod ends. Those were good. And we got the correct brake rotors, but there is a problem with the Akebono. Akebono pads that were listed for that brake rotor combination were not correct. We had to put a customer in a rental car because of parts. I mean, it, it's, it's gonna happen. Best thing a shop can do, the front end, is minimize those problems by making sure they get the right part. They're sitting on their butt, they can make sure they get the right parts. In a little mini rant, I never understood why the front personnel had so much trouble getting the right parts. Cause you know, the, the saying of, to a technician is, is there always time to do it right the second time? Yeah, same with parts. You're not right. You gotta sit on the phone with the dealership again. You gotta sit on the phone with the, the part store. You gotta check those parts in again. <laughs> so spend a little extra time making sure you got the right parts. Simple little things like that can drastically improve shop efficiency. Just the amount of cars you can move through. I know a, nothing rocket science. I mean, it, it's simple stuff. Assigning cars that guys, you know, have the time and the skills for. Making sure you got the right parts. Making sure the shop flows efficiently. Little things. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, subscribe. Make sure and hit that bell notification so you get notified when I put out new videos. If you didn't like the video, give me a thumbs down. Comments are always appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching. I am the Flat Rate Master.